Welcome back to Aurora's podcast. A Filipina's Journey to America. You are listening to episode 11. If you want to listen to this story from the very beginning, please scroll down below at the video description. If this is your first time visiting Aurora's vlog, please smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. So here we go, as we discussed in the last episode that Jack and I were hunting and Jack did some cool thing. So let's begin this, episode 11. One day, Jack's young teenage son, an 18 years old boy, who took off on him when he was only 5 years old and now came home to live with us. I didn't know the whole story about this subject at first, but we'll get to it later. During the last week of deer hunting winter season, I remember I was with Jack, we both wore camouflage. I was in the middle of acres and acres of land and he was at the other side of it. I sat on top of the tree for probably two to three hours being ice cold, extremely cold. Jack and I used a CB radio as our means of communication. The sun was about to set and it was getting really dark. So Jack and I headed home empty-handed. We didn't catch any deer that day. As we rode along the bumpy road. Mind you, we were still miles away from the main road. So if anything happens no one would know or hear about it. We saw a humongous black cow with a yellow tag on its ear standing blocking our path. There was no way for us to navigate either left or right because the road was so narrow enough for just the one truck to pass through. Jack honked three times and the cow just stared at the bright light coming from Jack's truck and didn't seem to care about the honking. Jack stepped out from the car and tried in vain to direct the cow out of our way but with no success. Jack came right back into his truck, started the engine, and tried to get closer to the cow, hoping that it would move away in fear. Again, with no success. He got out once again and went to the back of his truck. A loud noise came out. This time I screamed at Jack loudly. What are you doing? He goes, Just trying to scare the cow off. Again the humongous cow just stood still, carefree. Jack then got down on his right knee while he bent the other. I said, please shoot the cow. Without a word, the cow directly in its forehead and it went on the ground. My heart was thumping and beating heavily and I found myself asking him repeatedly, what have you done Jack, why, oh why? I was blubbering. I couldn't stop weeping, and I was so scared. This time it was proven that I was dealing with a serious man. I have to get away from him. Now what? The cow was still on the ground. It was even more difficult for us to pass now that the cow was... It was getting dark and we were swarmed with fireflies overhead. Next, Jack got a rope from the back of his truck tied both of the cow's back ends of its legs and attached the rope onto the back of his truck. I questioned him, what is going on, Jack? What are you going to do with the cow now? He goes, Just shut up, woman. When the rope was securely fastened at the back of his truck, he then starts the engine and hauled the cow for miles towards the remote hunting area. Well, once we arrived there, he untied the cow's leg and grabbed his pocket located in the console of his truck. He then started the into pieces. Take note that the pocket was so tiny in contrast to the cow's body. This was too much for me to bear. I was blubbering, sobbing, crying, screaming and begging him. I said, please stop it, please. Please, it is not yours and you have no right to mute that cow, Jack stop it. 
I was already screaming this at the top of my lungs this time. He did not listen. Jack then glanced at me with that irritated look and while he was chopping the he angrily said at the same time, You better stop crying or else. What did he mean by saying if I don't stop crying or else or else what Jack? That he would me too? That I would be next? I was so scared. I didn't know what he might do next. So I grabbed my three layers of clothing to cover my mouth. Just so that he couldn't hear me sobbing anymore. It wasn't easy to force myself to stop crying. Do you know how it feels when you are sobbing so hard and you have to stop instantly? It is difficult to breathe, but for the sake of my life, I really had to stop crying. At 10 p.m., the crickets were continuously making noises around us. Mosquitoes were buzzing around my ears and there were swarms of fireflies overhead. We were probably out there for eight hours total, still in the middle of nowhere. When Jack was done cutting up the meat into tiny bits and pieces, he smelled horrible due to the of the cow as well. He was covered in his own sweat. He got up, got himself tons of twigs and fresh branches of leaves off from a tree, and proceeded to cover the chopped up he then walked towards his truck and left the area without carrying the meat with him. I asked him why he left it without taking at least a few pounds of meat with him. Jack just says, No, you are never to speak about this to anyone. Do you understand? I didn't promise him because what he did was an unspeakable thing. What kind of a man would someone's cow inhumanely? Chop it up into pieces and let it rot in the corner. Next up. Watch out for the next episode. Jack stormed towards me and about to me. What do you think? How I dealt with the situation? If you made this far, thank you for listening to Aurora's podcast. A Filipina's Journey to America. Bye for now.